This is northern Alaska, a land of ice and silence. But over 70 million years ago, this frozen wilderness was something very different. Here, near the top of the world, stretched a vast polar forest, dense with conifers, ferns and flowering plants, a world where dinosaurs roamed beneath snow-laden branches and across frozen ground. During the late Cretaceous, this region plunged into long periods of darkness. For weeks, even months, the sun would not rise. Temperatures fell below freezing and yet life endured. Against all odds, giant reptiles adapted to the cold, the dark and the turning of a world few creatures dared to call home. As the first light returns to the high latitude forest, the cold silence begins to shift. From beneath snow-covered trees and natural hollows in the earth, the dinosaurs begin to appear, cautious, deliberate and alert. Their warm bodies release plumes of steam into the frigid air, a visible reminder of life continuing through the dark. These animals, survivors of months without sunlight, are emerging now to absorb the first rays of the Arctic dawn. In this frozen wilderness, even the smallest movement is a triumph of adaptation. Now, one by one, they emerge into the open, a procession of Arctic survivors. The hadrosaurs, thick-bodied and broad-backed, step into the clearing. Their skin is coated in a crust of ice and snow, remnants of the long night. It begins to melt slowly as the sunlight touches them for the first time in weeks. Smaller predators, feathered and alert, linger at the edge of the trees, cautious, yet drawn to the same warmth. They remain still. Not to feed, not to flee, but to face the sun. Here, at the top of the world, even light is seasonal, and when it returns, it is everything. As the light strengthens, the forest begins to stir beyond the clearing. From the tree line, the first carnivores emerge. Feathered, light-footed and cautious, they scan the frozen ground alert to every movement, every sound. These are opportunists, small theropods adapted to long periods of darkness and hunger. In the silence of the Arctic morning, they begin to explore the snow-packed earth, searching for signs of activity or weakness elsewhere. The herbivores begin to move as well, with sunlight slowly softening the frost. Patches of buried vegetation begin to reappear Frozen ferns, ancient horsetails, and low-lying shrubs exposed beneath the snow. Nostrils close to the ground, they sniff and scrape, seeking what little remains of the season's last growth. It is a slow, deliberate process, but essential. In this landscape, every calorie matters, and every step carries risk. Along the frozen riverbanks and beneath the trees, scavengers begin their silent search. They move with purpose, noses low, eyes sharp, drawn to the scent of what the winter did not spare. Some bodies lie hidden beneath the snow. Others, partially exposed, are stiff with frost and silence. For these small predators, this is a rare opportunity, a windfall in a world where food is scarce and competition constant. And on this morning, some do get lucky. As the day progresses, other forms of life begin to emerge 
drawn, like the dinosaurs, to the first glimpse of returning light. Among the undergrowth and melting patches of snow, hordes of prehistoric insects begin to stir. Some take flight, their wings shimmering in the cold air. Others crawl over bark, leaf litter, or decaying wood, each adapted to survive the long, frozen night. Giant beetles, early lacewings, and primitive wasps, their bodies dark and armored, scuttle across the forest floor. Delicate, long-legged crane flies hover low, while termites and ants, among the oldest social organisms on Earth, move in coordinated waves beneath the thawing soil. Many of these species will never fossilize. Their legacy lies not in stone, but in the rhythms they shaped, feeding birds, pollinating plants, and breaking down the dead. Together, they form the hidden machinery of this ancient ecosystem, a network just as vital and just as ancient as the giants that tower above them. As we go deeper into the forest, the carnivores continue to explore their options. Whether hunting fresh prey or scavenging the remains of winter, both strategies offer the same reward, survival. But not every creature makes an easy target. Some potential prey, like the ankylosaurs, remain well out of reach. Heavily armored, low to the ground, and equipped with powerful tails, these giants are built for defense. Even the most determined predator would think twice before challenging them head on. Instead, these herbivores move steadily through the snow-covered forest, scraping at frozen vegetation with methodical strength. Built to endure and built to resist, they are as much a part of this ecosystem's balance as the hunters that shadow them. But when the living are too well protected, the dead may offer another chance. With few options left, a frozen body, long buried in the snow, may be enough to draw the attention of hungry eyes once more. The sun, at this time of year, is never guaranteed. Moments of warmth are fleeting and can vanish just as quickly as they arrived. Snowstorms return without warning. Sudden gusts of wind sweep across the forest floor, bending trees and erasing tracks left only minutes earlier. In these moments, resilience becomes survival. Small dinosaurs retreat into the underbrush, searching for shelter beneath roots or fallen logs. Some vanish into the forest's edge, hoping the canopy will break the wind. But others, like this group of Ceratopsians, do not hide. They face the storm head on. Broad framed and thick skinned, they lean into the wind, snow crusting across their frills and backs. Step by step, they march forward, enduring together. Here in the polar wilderness, endurance is as vital as strength. But nothing lasts forever not even the storm. As the winds die down and the snowfall softens, the forest exhales once more. In the wake of the chaos, life stirs again. Hadrosaurs that endured the blizzard rise from the snowdrifts, their massive forms sluggish but determined. They begin to move, slow, steady, resuming their endless search for food. From beneath shrubs, rocks and the safety of hollow logs, smaller dinosaurs cautiously emerge. The air is still sharp, but the light is back, and with it, the need to feed. Yet not all made it through. The polar winter takes its toll, and those already weakened by the long night often pay the final price. 
Lying still in the snow, their bodies now serve another purpose. Even predators are not exempt. Wounded, starved or caught in the storm, they, too, fall. And in this frozen ecosystem, nothing goes to waste. Scavengers circle, some feathered and clever, others bold and strong, drawn by scent and instinct. The dead become the lifeline of the living. In this land of extremes, survival is not only about strength. It is about timing, resilience, and the ability to seize every fleeting opportunity. As the day draws to a close, the forest enters a final moment of activity. Small dinosaurs, alert and restless, move through the undergrowth, hoping to claim what's left of the day's feast. A fallen scrap, a forgotten carcass, a pocket of warmth beneath the snow. Some succeed, others do not. For them, the night holds more than just darkness. It brings cold, stillness, and the unknown. The polar night returns quickly, sweeping over the landscape with eerie silence. It is a time both feared and revered, but tonight the sky will offer more than shadow. Above the canopy, the first ribbons of color begin to stir. The aurora, silent and powerful, unfolds across the heavens, casting the snow in soft waves of green and violet. In this harsh and ancient world, beauty still finds a place. Night finally falls. The forest becomes still, snow settles, winds ease. The storm has passed. But silence does not mean sleep, not for everyone. Until the frost deepens, small dinosaurs like Trudon continue to move through the shadows, scavenging the forest floor. Sharp-eyed and persistent, they search for whatever the day has left behind, scraps, carcasses, forgotten trails. Sometimes they get lucky. Even the remains of a much larger creature can carry them one step further through the cold. Because here in the polar world, nothing is wasted. And nothing, not hunger, not darkness, not snow, ever stops the circle of life. Above all this, the sky performs its own ritual. Solar particles strike the upper atmosphere, dancing along magnetic lines. The result, light, color and motion, silent but alive. Green waves ripple across the stars, pulsing over the ancient trees and the creatures below. A final reminder, even in the coldest, darkest corners of Earth, there is beauty.